welcome to the second in our Vex Robotics Robot C 4.0 tutorial. In this video, we're going to be showing you a basic program that allows for the movement of your robot. The first thing that you're going to do is click New File at the top of the screen. Congratulations, you've successfully opened up your very first Robot C source file. You'll see a line of code already written on the screen. It says Task Main. This is where the compiler looks for the very first parts of code to start your program. There are many ways to do this next step, but the fastest way to do it is through motor and sensor setup at the top of your screen. Go ahead and click that. Now we're in our motor and sensor setup. We have a list of ports here, from port 1 to port 10. Port 1 is not commonly used since it only has two prongs to plug a motor into, but if you're using it, you can set it up accordingly. Port 2 is where we're going to start. The first thing that we're going to type in is left motor. Now note as we type this in, the first word, the first letter is lowercase, whereas the second word, and consecutive words for that matter, the first letter is uppercase. This is known as camel case, and it's known when defining variables helps keep things organized. Now we're going to do the same thing for right motor. So we're going to type in right motor with a capital M in motor, that is the second word in that series, and then we're going to select the appropriate motor. In our case, it is the VEX 393 motor. To find this out, You'll look at the back of the motor on your robot, and it'll tell you if it's a 393 or a 269 motor, and it'll also give you important information as to how many wires it is. Once you're finished with that, click Apply. Once you've clicked OK or Apply, you can go ahead and exit that window. You'll now see three new lines of code at the top of your screen. They start with Pragma Config motor, port number, the motor name, the type of motor, and then an open loop command. The next step that we're going to do is go into our task main function. Now it's conventional that when starting a new line of code you press the tab key after the squiggly brackets in the next line to help keep things organized. This is a convention and it's not necessary but it is definitely highly recommended. The first command that you're going to write is motor to define that we want to call upon a motor. Next you're going to put in a left square bracket and in this we're going to say what motor we want to work on. So in this case we're going to do the left motor that we defined earlier through the motor and sensor setup and now is defined in line in the code at the top of the screen. Then you're going to close that statement with the right bracket. Now, you're going to press space here. While it's not required, it is highly recommended. Helps keep your code organized so that you can see all the different functions and operators that you're using. Now you're going to say this motor is equal to space 127. 127 is the max speed allowed for a VEX motor. Now, as with many programming languages, such as Java or C in general, you're going to want to end the line with a semicolon. Now we're going to do the same thing for the right motor. We're going to say motor, left bracket, right motor, right bracket, space equals space 127, semicolon. Make sure to end every line with a semicolon, otherwise the compiler thinks that line has not ended and we'll start to mash things together with the next line. Robot C is a pretty intuitive language. You can have blank spaces or blank lines in your code without the compiler feeling that there should be code there and then compile it incorrectly and give you an error. So you can just go ahead and skip two lines and this is going to be a new command and we're going to keep our code organized this way. So what we're going to use is the wait one millisecond command typed wait 1msec, sec second, and msec meaning millisecond. We're going to start with a left bracket, a parenthesis, 
and we're gonna say in here the amount of milliseconds that we would like the program to wait before executing the next command. So we're gonna say 2,000 milliseconds for two seconds, remembering that there are 1,000 milliseconds per second. Go ahead and close that with a right parenthesis and then end the line with a semicolon. So far, our program has set the left motor and the right motor to full speed. Now it's waited two seconds while those motors are still running at full speed. And now what it's going to do is turn off those motors. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and set motor, left bracket, left motor, right bracket, space, equals, space, and then zero, because we want the speed of this motor to be zero. We're going to end that line with a semicolon and do the similar thing, but this time for the right motor on the next line. Now we're going to teach you how to comment your code. Judges look very favorably upon people that comment their code. Commenting is important because it tells you exactly what's going on in the program and it helps you with troubleshooting later on. It's also important if you have more than one programmer on your team. So if one's absent during competition or during practice, you'll still know what's going on in the code and you'll be able to fix it if problems arise. The first type of comment you're going to learn is what's called a line comment. What's going to happen is that it's denoted by two slashes in the code. And it, what it's going to do is comment off the rest of the line. So the compiler, when you run this code, knows that you're not executing what's in this space. The line comment that we have here is going to tell us exactly what's going on in this line of code. In this case, we've set our left motor to full speed. So we're going to say that. On the next line, we can also do the same thing for the right motor. We're going to say this set the right motor to full speed. After a comment, you do not need to put the semicolon because it's not a piece of code being executed. We're going to go ahead and use comments to explain what the rest of the code means. You don't have to comment every single line of your code like we're doing but it's important to have a general idea of what's going on at every single point. There's also a way to comment across multiple lines. The way to do this is slash, asterisk, and then the text that you'd like to input on the first line, press return, input text on the next line, and do so as you wish, making sure to end this multi-line comment with the asterisk slash Note that that's the reverse position of the starting, which was slash asterisk. That denotes the beginning, and this denotes the end of our multi-line comment. Thank you for watching our very first tutorial video in which we've used the Robot C environment. I also recommend that you guys check out some of our other Robot C instructional videos, and make sure to get the word out so that people know that there's a great resource there to help them.